You reach the jetty and climb out of the skiff. There's someone waiting for us. Look, Lillian's not there anymore. A lot of snow coming down, too. Nothing on tab. Oh, what? What's this? I didn't know. I don't know what I'm even doing here, Harry. We were what the tide brought him. We're here because we were worried. Oh my God! Wait, is this, is this, asshole, and horseface? Harry, you're bleeding all over the place. You're half dead. Whatever this is, it is completely unimportant compared to what you've just seen. You mean the Fazbin or something else? This is the man with sunglasses from the Whirling in Rags. But where are his sunglasses? Wait, you're an asshole. That's right. And you're bleeding. No one else seems to be bothered by the bleeding. Bothered by it? Harry, you look like you need a fucking organ transplant. Oh, fuck it. Let's not get into that. Yeah, I agree. Kuno, you still have my back, right? Good old pig, see ya. <laughs> nice. Who are you people? Hello. Um, Trant Heilerstam. I believe we've met on several occasions. Yes, I remember you, Trant. I'm your goddamn partner, Jean Vicumar, and this is your special task force. Or what's left of it. Trant was part of our special task force? Special consultant Trant Heidelstam. Battle officer Judith Minot. What? Hi. Hi, Judith. We've come to scrape what's left of you off the pavement. God, why are you such a dick? Task force? Cool? On the Kuno? We just came from the fucking island? He says, pointing to the sea fort behind us. Listen, Kuno. The man assesses the kid like a strike team leader about to kick in a door. Harry and I are old friends from way back. Mind letting us have a moment? Won't be long. I just need to talk to Harry about some of the things I think he's done wrong lately. Wow. Good luck with that. Sounds like you're in some shit. I guess so. We're not going to talk about the Phasmid. What is this about? Harry, we want to help you. Trant, I believe this is where you come in. So Trant, that was just a front? Is Mikkel your actual son? This is the horse-faced woman. I don't know why you named her that, but it was beyond idiotic. You should never address her using those words again. Okay, we won't. Um, I don't quite know what I'm doing here. I was asked to participate as an expert. I think I need to manage your expectations a little. I'm at best an enthusiast in cognitive science. My background is in something else entirely. I engage in neurology on a merely theoretical level. In fact, I should probably get going. Wait, what? No, Trant, it's too late. You're part of this shit now. What have you got to say for yourself, shit kid? Wait, is, is shit kid Trant or is shit kid Kuno? Shit kid. What an interest in Monica. What's a shit kid? You. Shit kid, that's you. Oh, okay, so I guess he was talking to us, not Kuno. Despite all that you've done, the deserter, the phasmid, the case. Despite all that I've done? No, because of all that you've done. How did you know I was here? The cafeteria manager you fucked over told us where you went. I saved his establishment and he still betrays me? Strange. He didn't mention that. In fact, the establishment didn't look saved at all. There was a giant I.O. graffito in front of the building. It was on fire. Yeah, I lit it on fire. It was a poetic gesture. We can either do that or throw Kuno under the bus, but we're not doing that. I knew it. Didn't I tell you, Trant? I told you it was a shit kid. The line is from Lu Jiatun's Mirova 82, isn't it? About girl-child communism, the titular returning character to ghost the apparition of... Good choice, Harry. <laughs> he says that as he looks around, noticing the impatience of everybody. He is correct. It was the Serayese poet Lu Jiatun who in the 50s of the last century composed the Don't encourage him, Trant. Okay. Okay, so we nod to the female officer. You, I'm sorry I didn't recognize you before. It's okay. I didn't come here to gloat or to fool you. Neither did he, actually. We're just worried. That's right. Worried. I'm always worried about you. Every time you don't show up to work, or when you do about stink. You're a worry fest. She's worried about you. I'm worried about you. Even special consultant Backpedal is worried about you. Everyone worries instead of working. Special consultant Backpedal. This guy is a laugh riot. So Trant Heidelstam turns out to be special consultant Trant Heidelstam. Yes, I'm Trant Heidelstam. I never said I wasn't Trant Heidelstam. 
Wait, well, what was up with the kid then? Mikael? Mikael is my son. Oh yeah? What was up with all the interesting history? Spying on me? No, I was just interested in the Feld building and the Martinez beachhead. And Mikael wanted to see Martinez. It was a coincidence. I'm not sure I buy that. Him being there with his son, it was not a coincidence. It's difficult to see, but he was worried about you. And also interested in the Feld building. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So what are you special consulting here? What indeed? I was asked to share my take on some of the more obscure theories developed in Königstein in the 30s. Like partial psychotraumatic amnesia, group personality theory. He's here to see if you're insane. He is smart. Let's move on. You aren't the man with sunglasses at all. You're not even blonde. Wait, but we knew he was wearing a wig. Guilty as charged. I heard you'd lost your mind and your memory. I wanted to see if it was true. And it was. Good work, Harry. You're insane now. There's one less person for me and everyone else to rely on. I wonder why he hates us so much. He was too sarcastic for you to realize who he was. Actually, I suspected something was off. Did you? Or did you literally not recognize my face? We've been partners for how long, Harry? Don't answer that. You don't remember. I certainly don't know. Absolutely no idea. A hundred years? Oh, should we say that? Judging by the familiarity you feel toward him, two years minimum? Or maybe a short but close stint on the task force? He's right. Don't start guessing. Now's not a good time. I agree with that. I'm not going to say duped again. So you mentioned a task force? Yeah. Major Crimes Unit. Under Lieutenant Dubois and Vicamal. Ring any bells? Refresh my memory. Who else is in this? Refresh your memory? It's a goddamn Major Crimes Unit. There's you, me, Jude, Tron fucking Heidelstam, and Guillaume Baby. I'm technically just a civilian advisor. Right, Sergeant Backpedal. Oh, fuck you. You're part of this shit show. Yeah, um, first, who's Guillaume Bevy? Oh, that's an interesting story, actually. Guillaume Bevy is a police reporter who joined our team. He was really good. Then he left because he lost faith in your ability to lead the unit. I think I can understand that. Other people have left too. Good, smart people. People we won't get back. Only me and this really patient patrol officer are still here. And Tron because I'm forcing him to stay. Is this Guillaume Bevy blonde and partial to sunglasses? Since that's their only choice, I guess we'll do that. Is this Guillaume Bevy blonde with sunglasses like you were? See? There. He's getting it. I was impersonating him. Look at me, I'm G. Bevy. It was going to be funny, but then you really did have brain damage. So not so much anymore. He sincerely thought it was going to be amusing for both of you. Okay, so what does this unit do? Do? It's a major crimes unit. We clear the desk of cases, so Precinct 41 doesn't look like the worst station in town. We are shit tier now, Harry. Because of you. Where have you been all this time? Where have we been? We've been fucking off as far as I remember. He crosses his arms. You told us to fuck off. You said we're cramping your style. Your detective god. Fuck everything. All we burn. Detect or die. It does seem like the superstar style. And you were probably right too. I would have never let you abduct a kid and take him on a creepy boat trip in the middle of fucking March. To be fair, he met us on the island. You talking about Kuno? Major Kuno wasn't abducted, you fucking fat dink. Fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, Kuno definitely has our back. I said all those things? I'm not like that anymore. Sure. You're not a superstar law official. Talk on the town is your Guillaume Le Million reincarnate. I know this shit. Nothing has changed. Yeah, that might actually be true. None of this is ringing any bells. The bells aren't ringing because you have brain damage. Trant, this is where you come in. How bad is it? Well, he doesn't have visible tremors, he talks without slurring, he can drive a boat, he's standing, reasoning. All good signs, but complete retrograde amnesia, episodic and semantic. Meaning, you forgot both who you are and the definitions of money, Isola, Pell, and so on. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, especially if you're trying to be a character in a role-playing game. As displayed in the station call, our interactions with him, and I don't want to be a snitch, but also mine with him before when Harry did not seem to know who I was. It's all very interesting. Interesting? Yes, interesting. I have my theories, but I would like to hear Harry's thoughts first. Harry, 
What do you think happened to you? Neurologically, psychologically, and why not socioeconomically? Yeah, I'm going to start with this one. Wait, socioeconomically? You think I'm so poor I lost my memory? Not when you phrase it like that. But I don't think critical theory. I know everyone thinks this is far-fetched pink academia, but still, I don't think it should be off the table here. Pink academia? What does that mean? What? He lost his memory because of capitalism? Yeah, that sounds like a load of crap. No, not like that. I'm not talking Vredefort's cool here. But Harry, I asked you, what do you think happened? Something so sad happened to me that I couldn't be me anymore. It was a defense mechanism. I actually think that's what happened. All the rest of it was was symptoms of that. Psychotraumatic amnesia, Trant. I can go for that. Shit kid is a broken man. Always has been. Who isn't? I know I am. But you know what? I keep my shit together. Also, I know a person can't wipe their own mind, however traumatic it gets. That doesn't happen. You're lying. Or insane. Or both. But Detective Vigmer, he has blanked out before. I have? Yes, a couple of times. After some of the more serious benders. One was after the two drunks case. The other when we looked into that mural. So you don't remember not remembering. Beautiful. Yeah, self-referential, I guess. Interesting. So at first he dipped his toes into it, prepared. That's where he would have gotten the idea, yes. Practice. And then he used alcohol to get there, so to speak. What do you mean? Well, here is my theory. What if this is an absolutely normal reaction to the world we're living in? What if this is not a significant anomaly at all? Something to be explained, approached as a defect. Look at the sensory input here. He gestures towards the scenery, so it's some sort of coping mechanism, like intentional amnesia. Look at the ruins, the neon. Listen to the radio, the multitudes, the people. Live here for 40 years. As a police detective, he's like a magnetic reader on the world team, to borrow a known metaphor. Harry's been pushed flat against it. Total input. Hardwired to the free market. He just needed for its end. He's really into this capitalism stuff. Okay, Trump, thank you. That's absolutely <laughs> I'm glad we brought you. Will he or will he not be able to work in the major crimes unit? Is he a cretin now? I want to know that. He's not a cretin, and he is able to do work. If not in his previous leadership role, then as a line detective. Oh, what are we going to say? I, I really want to say, fuck all of you. I don't want to be in your unit. What does he want? Okay, let me think for a second. He was trying to solve this crime to kind of re rehabilitate himself in his own mind. To win back his own self-respect. And he's done a good job, but this guy's an asshole. You know what? Fuck all of you. I don't want to be in your unit. No, Harry. Fuck you. You already fucked us. I've already explained this shit to Price twice. To Berdyayeva four times. I'm your partner. I answer for you when you're not there. They can keep that pension. You're rock solid. You can put your clothes on hard. I don't really know what that means, but let's go with what Physical Instrument's saying. What now? Now nothing. Now we're just going to stand here. Really? No. Now we discuss that. What the fuck did you do to a motor carriage? Why is it there, Harry? We could just flat out say I drove it into the ocean when I was drunk, but instead... We, we hate this guy so much, we're so bothered by him, I am personally bothered by him, that we're gonna say, you can call me Tequila Sunset. I also jumped the canal, by the way. Ha ha ha. Ho ho ho. Tequila Sunset. Jump the canal. So funny, Ari. Thank you for fucking me. Thank you for destroying 45,000 real of police property that's coming out of my payslip. You know that, right? You're gonna get fired, and I'm gonna pay till I die. I'm not sure we have a problem with either of those things. It doesn't matter. <sighs> your badge, Harry. Show me your badge. Wait, my badge? The thing that tells people you're a police officer. I, I, I know what it is. I've got my badge right here. We show it to In them. In a rush to demonstrate your badge, your eager fingers can't sustain a grip on the smooth plastic, and the badge slips out of your hand. Oh my god. We are proficient in catching small objects, but we still only have a 42% chance. Let's try catching it. We did it! Oh my gosh! Oh, we bent down and caught it. Not today, badge. The drama is unnecessary. I got the badge all as well. 
<laughs> no, the drama is absolutely necessary. Behold, my badge. And your gun? He asks, unimpressed by the piece of plastic in our hands. As if having your badge and gun are natural states, not achievements. <laughs> what is it with all these material objects? Should we say this? Gun, badge, car, these are all things. Things don't matter. People do. Yeah, let's say that. You're drunk, aren't you? You lost your gun and you're drunk. You're a drunk, gunless bomb. I can't smell it. No, we have our gun, you asshole. Wow, you're being brutalized? Pick on pick violence? I didn't lose my gun. I have my gun. It's right here. We're not talking about the fucking gun anymore. We're talking about the vaporized cloud of ethanol coming from your mouth. We're, we're not drunk. This is so unfair. He knows you have the gun and still he's punishing you. I'm not drunk. I haven't started drinking again. So you forgot to drink? I don't buy it. Why do you smell like a corpse then? Why do we smell like a corpse? Oh, come on. You're gonna cut him some slack? Pig's been working hard, digging through the guts of corpses and shit, getting shot and shit? Yeah, it's been a bit of a week. I'm sorry I smell bad. A bit of a week? You're drunk, and you let a suspect escape, a certain classier, because you were too drunk to assess a flight risk. That is absolutely untrue. We've read the report, Sari. Lieutenant Kitsuhagis. We know. We keep wanting to talk about the Phasmid, but I don't think he's going to do it. We, we know who the murderer is. That's just a small detail in a huge case you know nothing about, you bastard. Sure, if it's part of your master plan. Let's not even get into the other suspect. The one who shot herself in the head. Another detail? Yeah, let's actually not get into the Ruby situation. Or the fact that you kidnapped a kid and took him to some island? That's small time stuff. That's nothing. That's a humorous anecdote. I mean, if anybody did the kidnapping, it was Kuno kidnapping us. Compared to the seven people who were gunned down, the streets are literally red with blood. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is barely clinging to life in the hospital. Harry, it was fucking mass murder. That that was not set up by us. Yo, I'ma stop you right there, fuckface. It's Kuno time. You know what time it is. It's Kuno time. Are we gonna shush Kuno? No, Kuno has our back. I did everything I could. The company had hired unvetted. No, you've explained enough, pig. Kuno takes care of this shit now. I love Kuno. I just love Kuno. I've gone from hating him and thinking he's such a prick to <laughs> to really loving him. First of all, yo, those guys were all f***ed. The guys in the armor, f***ed. The union guys, f***ed. So yeah, suck Kuno's dick. You don't know him. <laughs> you don't know what happened here. You don't know this shit. Automatic fucking weapons. Urban battleground shit? Battle lines drawn in blood? Blood Meridian? You don't know this shit. Now, Kuno wasn't there. Right, you getting this? Kuno was breaking up with Kuno's main <laughs> bitch, see? Part of the way shit. But when Kuno got there, Pig had fucking cleaned up. Blood and ruin. Smoked all those dinky fuckers. Saved this shit. Martinet shit. I see his morning and shit. His main pig got semi-wasted. Sent to the Boo Boo Mobile. Kuno steps up. Kuno fucking fills those shoes. Big boy shoes. Detective Kuno. I mean, maybe we should have shushed him, but he's so funny. He comes to a sudden abrupt stop. Are you done? I don't know. Is he done? Yo, Kuno feels like you weren't really listening to Kuno. You were hearing, but you weren't listening. <laughs> In the armor boys came to Martinez to fuck shit up. Hardy boys or whatever the fuck they are. They were telling everyone and their mum how they wasted one of those armor fucks. It was always going to go down like that. My pig stepped up, got fucked in the leg for it. Sacrifice style. That's right. Not bad, Kuno. Could be a little shorter, though. Yeah, probably. Yes, I understand. He was in the fight. Second, you dinky fucking asshole. <laughs> this pig right here. This oink oink motherfucker solved that shit on Death Island. Case solved. Go home or fuck off. Yeah, look, point is, we saved as many people as we could. Yeah, and solved that shit. Fucking grandpa in the woods did it. Old shit. Kuno doesn't know about that. Look, the real shit here is... He was a straggler from the revolution who stayed in hiding for 50 years. I found him. Yeah, yeah, straggler, sure. Are you getting this smart shit? The old fuck killed him. Confessed to it too. We got him snitching on himself. Popo style. A straggler. 
from the revolution. He sounds incredulous. Yeah, fucko. He's on the island right now, in a coma or some shit. Oh, and we also got the gun. Gun of the killer shit. You know what I mean? Now, let's get our big boy shit on. Uh, big boy shit? He may have committed other murders over the years. We have him confessing to one too, a big one. Yeah, big shit. We're taking them all down. We're cleaning this shit up. Now, listen up, soup fuck. You're gonna shit yourself because it's gonna get wacko natural. Wait, it's not gonna get that. Let me... Too late. We're in this. There's a fucking four ton oh, of no. on the island. Oh no, Kuno. What? <clears throat> Sorry, kid. Me and Harry need to... Yo, this is like the biggest moment in history right now. You wanna fucking listen to what's coming out of Kuno's mouth. He says, pointing to his crooked scowl. We saw the giant insect, white as fuck. Literally the Insulindian phasmid or some shit. Praying mantis style. It was three meters tall, and this pig right here. His hand is shaking with rage and excitement. As he points at us. This fucking old popo discovered it. Me and the pig bacon discovered a new species. It was beautiful. It was... You ain't seen this kind of animal before. Fucking miracle shit. He gulps. Overcome with awe. This case. This fucking grandpa shit. This ugly shit. It's nothing. We saw a ghost. A real life ghost. Like he fucking proved ghosts are real. It's that big, Popo. It's fucking... His eyes are welling up now. Why are you not fucking shitting yourselves? What's wrong? He glares at the officer standing silently in the rain. The water is coming down hard, washing the concrete. Because they don't fucking believe you, Kuno. Did he just say... Insulindian phasmid? I don't know. Eyes on doubt. Harry, did you just pick up some myelin bomb and pin it on him? <laughs> you aren't fucking listening. The bomb is nothing. This is science history here. It was the Insulindian phasmid. It's connected to the shit. Tell him. It's not connected to the case. Oh, I guess it is connected to the case. Oh, Harry, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? He wants to resuscitate his life. There was an Insulindian phasmid and it may be connected to the case. He's going to tell the truth. Look, 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 look. Jean Vickermeer. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, you'd know, please. You have to have more than just a mantis. The straggler stick to that. You said you solved the murder. We did solve the murder. It's not going well. Present something now. Something sane and clear. Make your case. No, there was a giant insect, and they have to understand that. You will find proof. Don't give up. These are all so weird. Like we started a drug uh, nightclub and a drug lab. We have strong motive. Okay, this is what we're going to say. You have to believe me, there was a giant phasmid. The previous head of the Debardeurs Union was assassinated. There was a de I mean, like, this is just a bunch of different stuff that we we did through the course of the game. The killer, Le Leonovich Dross. We have a strong motive for him. Leonovich. A revolutionary matronym. A revolutionary matronym? And the custom started in Grad, where they have patronyms. Krasovich, Larsovich, etc. The revolutionaries saw this as a chauvinist atavism, so they used matronyms, derived from the mother's name, instead. Oh, that's kind of neat, actually. This man would be Lillian's son, Lilianovich. The custom was overturned after the revolutions failed, but not before making it to Revachol. Could he be Lillian's father? He thinks this detail bolsters your straggler theory. It is what a soldier of the ICM would be called. Okay, Trant, thank you. I get it. Harry, no more giant insects. You said you have a motive? This narrow-minded pig. I can't fucking... Get the kid in line. You could use his help here. Kuno, keep your head in the game. All right, yeah. Kuno's in it. He understands you have to nail this. He killed the mercenary in an act of jealousy. Jealousy? He's what, 80? 90? Didn't you say he's been in hiding since the revolution? Yes, I did. Yes, yeah, suit. Check this shit out. The Merc was banging some chick he wanted to bang, so we shot him. Chick's called Klasje. Klasje, as in the suspect he let escape from Kitsuragi's report. Yeah, the very same. Fucking snitch being clad. Yeah, that chick. Get over it, pig. She didn't do it. It was Grandpa on the island. Merc was fucking her, and he couldn't hack it. Kuno can hack it. Kuno can hack it, of course he can. He's a trained sniper. The weapon he uses is more than capable of making the shot. Okay. And he'll confess to the prosecution too. 
I think once he's resuscitated, yes. We got him talking once. He'll talk again. Resuscitated. That sounds great. Well, whatever. Jean, he has it. No more cooperation needed. He had a civilian there for the confession. This is doable. Okay. We'll see about it when we get Coast Guard on the island. This left a mark. They can't deny it, son. You got the bastard. We got the bastard. This is good. They can't deny it. The previous head of the Debordeaux Union was assassinated by our killer. Yeah, let's say it. What? On behalf of... Edgar Clare. For the sake of political neutrality, I would like to not partake in anything union-related. This has to be good stuff for him to backpedal out of it at first mention. The fuck, you puss? This will send you flying? Trust Kuno? Grandpa laid down some real shit? Conspiracy style? If that's even remotely true, then a clandestine investigation will be required. It smells like bad news to me. A classic shit kid case that'll get people killed or fired. We are not part of the moral intern. We will not serve them. Not discussing it further out here in the open is probably a good idea. People must have seen you return from the island. Word travels fast. Yeah, fair enough. So what do you say? Want to take this hot shit back? No. Sure, you get the case together. You can do police work in bouts. That's not a surprise to me. Even the insect. I don't care. But you're an alcoholic and you've been drinking again. I won't let my life unravel because of this. He has. That's true. There's an enormous sadness in that admission. See, she liked us. She wants us to be successful. It's tough. One of the toughest addictions to overcome. Comparable only to heavy synthetic opiates. Even morphine is easier to kick than alcohol, statistically. The odds are against him, especially at his age. Thanks, Tron. That's super duper helpful. He's too old. He's been like this for too long. I've seen him try many times. It's a farce by now. You're a fucking farce. They're leaving. They're all turning away from you. If you declare yourself a doomed man, a doomed man does not need comfort from anything. He can go on without drink or help like a clockwork. Wow, so this is a situation where if I had maybe kept the wasteland of reality thought, maybe this would be less of a problem. For the world. I'm not really certain what's happening here. For the planetary proletariat. Think, you can detect in Jamrock, Boogie Street, Kuron, Leroy Underground, Coal City on the 881. It will all be yours to sift through when the last snow has melted. I mean, we know we're good. Ruby was so afraid of us just from our reputation that preceded us. Stop and you can go to the burnt out quarter and meet me there, wafting above the burnt ruins, like the smell of caramel. Lurita is waiting. I don't really know what to say. W are we this communist? Hmm, we might be that communist. Wait, can we check which one we are? Okay, we're more communist than Superstar. I think we have to go for the commune thing. God, that's not the choice I would make. Damn. But I think we have to do it. I know it's difficult to believe, but I will do it. I will give up alcohol for the white banner of the commune. Listen to this shit, man! Detective. I just don't want this trial to go on any longer. It's cold outside and let's just go. Fucking Harry, fuck you for bringing this kid with you. It's only because he's defending you. It's the only reason you're not staying here to die. You manipulative son of a bitch. It is cold and we have vehicles in the square. The perp needs to be taken into custody. Let's get a move on. Now, now you will finally get to know who you are. Wait. I have a few questions before we go about who I am. The man looks westward, impatiently, jingling his car keys in his pocket. Why am I like this? It's not a mystery. Some chick fucked you over. Also, you were drunk. You really went with it too. Really maximized the damage. Was she called Dora Dubois? Dubois? It was Dora Ingeland, I think. You've said her name, but you weren't married. You were engaged. Wait, Dora Ingerland? Something like that. Half Vasa. Vasa is where beautifully and impossibly blonde people come from. So we weren't even married. No one is married anymore. This is Revachol. When was this? God, I don't know. Six years ago, she was way before my time. 
Six years and you haven't gotten over it. What the hell is wrong with you? Six years? Yeah, or seven. You're not doing too good there. It's an old man thing. Two old years equals one no more year. That and Dorangalon really tore you a new one. A big one. Clearly. Who was she? Incredibly bangable. Wow, that's... No, I meant, what did she do? She was incredibly fuckable. A beautiful what? bourgeois woman. Wayfish. Like a welkin, basically. Wow, that's... That's really derogatory. Snow welkin. Blonde welkin. Heartbreak welkin. <laughs> all these different types of welkin. Pain welkin. Yeah, she was all these things. I've only seen a picture. But it's obvious you formed a real spiritual connection with how pretty she was. One you never recuperated from. Look, the sun is about to go down. It's time to go. I think she taught in the Académie des Arts, east of the river. Way east. Hard to say which came first, the middle-class chick or the drink. Egg and the chicken kind of thing. My point is, you need to see a psychiatrist about this shit. Not a psychologist. Several degrees harder. Is there something harder than a psychiatrist? A forensic psychiatrist? Go talk to that. Okay, thanks, John. In other words, he's heard enough about this. But who am I? Who are you? You're a gym teacher, Harry. What? Well, obviously you're not a gym teacher anymore, but... But before? Before you were a cop, you were a gym teacher in Coron. It's getting really cold outside. Should we maybe... I wasn't a rock and roll singer. A guerrilla soldier gym teacher? No. A regular one. Ah, that does explain a lot. No big. That explains everything. The running, the jumping, the shot put, your whack mustache. Kuno likes that crazy face action. How I can run for six hours a day. Hey, they're making fun of me. How you spin kicked the kipped out. Gymnast style. Kuno seen this shit before? In gym class. We did actually spin kick the shit out of Measurehead. Kick his ass, kick his ass, kick his ass, kick his ass. Oh! Dang! Also, this guy. Just everything about this guy. Oh god, Contact Mike. You've been on about Mike again. I hate that guy. Contact Mike is a reprise of the most inspiring basic sporting principle of open competition. A 5,000 to 1 rank outsider. Oh, you don't say. Does he also vault an impassable gulf of finance and privilege? I don't know, does he? It is... It is getting cold out. <laughs> she really wants to go. When was this? When was I a gym teacher? In your 20s or late 20s. You've really let yourself go since then. We sure have. You said in Kuron I was a gym teacher there? Yes, you taught gym in Kuron. I believe that's the term. Taught gym at a high school. You were a high school gym teacher. This is very strange. The smell of sweat and glue. The worn floorboards. This is really an angle I did not anticipate. Kuro is just east of Jamrock. It was a short walk every morning to the baseball field or the sports building. Then why did I join the RCM? The regular. You found some chick. She inspired you to fight the big fight. Be more than you are. You make me want to be a better man. But we're a good cop. You. Every morning, walking from Voyager Road to teach Jim. She leaving for the academy with her spring coat on. The air filled with the smell of smoke and raspberries and incredible hope. An ocean full of hope. Wow, like most things with Harry, quite sad, quite melancholy. Okay, I see now. Kuno fucking knew there had to be something wrong if you can run like that. Let's just get all this information since we're clearly coming up to the end of the game. Precinct 41, what kind of station is Us. this? Well, the bloody murder station, haven't you heard? With the bad guys, no one likes us. What? Bitches dream of the 41st? Why you think Kuno's in this shit? Where it is, it's fucking violent. Your Captain Price dusted like a thousand people. I was wondering why he was so keen to join. Thank you, Kuno. You're being kind. It's an understaffed station and the district is too big, which is why we need to... Get back to it. We left Torson and McLean to run the Sea-Wing. It's not good. Torson and McLean? Mac the Torso Torson and Chester McLean. They're not fit to run a wing. Believe me. Things are shaky as it is. They are damn iconic though. Torson and McLean. An iconic duo, I take it. Yeah, not like us. Two clinically depressed old men. Where's the contrast here? We are garbage. And the sea wing is? God. 
There are four wings, Harry. A, B, C, and D. We're in C. It's made of losers and clock punchers. You and I reconceptualized it as a task force. It was a mistake. Why was it a mistake? We solved a, like a bazillion cases and killed almost nobody. There's also a lot of outside help involved. Not only me, other losers too. <laughs> He's anything but a loser. Although he would like to be seen as one. It's cooler that way. Yeah, very cool. So cool. And Price is... Tony Price? He's the son of the old Price, one of the founders of the RCM. Yeah, that shit is fucking famous on Channel 8. Kuno hears this shit. I don't even know what this refers to. Let's ask it. Did we recently shoot up a church by any chance? So he remembers that. Yes, there may have been a raid on some churches. It wasn't good press. Shooting up churches never is. I was out of town, to be clear. What happened? Why did we need to go there? Our enemies were hiding in a church, to the best of our information. That's it. I'm not talking about this anymore. Your security clearance is shit tier right now. You have to wait for it to go up. We're getting all these skill points and we're at the end of the game. I wonder if we could just slap them into something. Your clearance will not go up while you're within earshot of the Union headquarters. Yeah, that makes sense. So I work in the bloody murder station. Okay. It's not the bloody murder station. It's an old converted silk mill with green desk lamps and a coffee corner. A lot of good people work there, hard, every day. Jamrock is the largest ghetto in Rivershoal. Forbog, technically, but uh, it's divided into 11 districts. Jamrock only as us. Kuno's liking this shit. Jamrock is the real shit. Mayonnaise is fucking white as balls. <laughs> See shit? This ain't a real ghetto. <laughs> White as balls. Thank you, Kuno. You bring light to my day. Yeah, doesn't he though? The Fazbin. I need to tell Lena about this ASAP. Who is Lena? She lives at 1113 Tabernacle Road in Jamrock. Remember? I do remember. Well, you reminded me. A cryptozoologist. She lives in Jamrock on Tabernacle Road. She told me about this Fazbin. Tabernacle? It's on the way over. Near where you live on Perdition. She looks at Vikumar. Fine. If we're gonna drop you off anyway. Nice. She's going to be over the moon. It will do you good to deliver some good news to someone for a change. Oh, I wonder if we get to see that scene. Kuno, what will you do now? Fuck do you think? Gonna rock that law enforcement shit with you guys? Detective Kuno? Like you promised? Like you promised? Guys, Kuno's enrolling in a junior officer program. No, he's not. What is he? 10? 11? Kuno's fucking 19? <laughs> you have to be 15 for the junior officer program. You're not even that. Hey, you don't get it? Kuno's got pig all over him. Kuno smells of bacon grease. Being seen with you. <laughs> fucking informant shit. You think no one sees this? They're gonna hang me by the nuts if you leave me here. You want that on you? A dead kid? Or you want Kuno at your station? Solving shit? Like we just did. He makes a strong case. His hands are shaking and his face is white. Yeah, because he's nervous as hell. He's genuinely scared of being left behind. Uh, yeah, he should be. It's not the locals he's worried about, but an 11-year-old girl. We're going to lower our voice. Sean, he has nothing. I know a hundred kids with nothing, Harry. We can't make them all cops. You don't have to make them cops. Only Kuno. Kuno's an asset. He was good on the island. He can do this. I don't care. He can't be a cop. He's just a kid. A kid who says f every four seconds. I won't say it. I, I won't say it anymore. Yeah, you can hear the tone of his voice has changed. His teeth are clenched and his throat moves in a gulping motion. Maybe you can take the kid with you. Enroll him a year earlier and say he's 14. If he... I promise I won't say it. I, I won't say any of it anymore. He shakes his head so hard his face turns red. Oh, for God's sake. Yes, we'll do it. All right, we're getting everything. We're winning here. Another sigh. Of oh. surrender. Recruit Detective Kuno Deruder. Nice, nice. We got that achievement. All right, I'm ready. Wait, end. Is this ending the game? Good. She looks at you, then at Vikramar. Fuck it, let's go. Tron brought his motor carriage. It's a 20 minute drive to Jamrock. Under the afternoon sky, the great district hums. A chessboard of wooden houses, 80,000 living souls, and chimney stacks. Fire traps as far as the eye can see. From Main Street to Precinct 41 to Boogie Street, forking into the snow swept horizon. 
You close your eyes and hear the dogs bark. A lone woman sits by a factory window, dreaming of meteorite strikes. On Rue de Saint-Jerome, a square bullet slides into a square-shaped chamber. In Old South, a man without eyelids smiles. Spring has come. It's time. Wow, I think, I think we are. I think we're about to end it here. Torsen? Yes. McLean? Yes. Heidelstam? No. Vickmere? Yes. Dubois? Yes. Really? Nick Scottlieb looks up from the list. I hear he's unstable. You say that like it's a bad thing. Captain Potomney Price gestures with a ballpoint pen. It's dim in his office, and the curtains are drawn. Harry's our man. He'll pull through. When he does, he'll side with the people. Understood. Gottlieb returns to the list. Minnow? Of course. Wonderful. Then can we please just go back to Jamrock now? Wow, and this is it. This is the end. There's Kuno saluting. He runs by. He's opening the door. Motioning everyone to get in the car. Wow, and we're all climbing in. I <laughs> threw threw Kuno into the car. Pats him on the shoulder. And Harry puts his hand down and helps him in. Whoa. And there it is. Disco Elysium. As we watch the credits roll, I want to thank you for your support throughout this series. I really had no idea what to expect from Disco Elysium. I went in blind, hoping it would be good. Good isn't even close. I've repeatedly commented, marveled even, at the caliber of the writing and the depth of the characters, how they all felt like actual humans, not the typical video game cardboard cutouts. I was emotionally engaged throughout the series, but there are certain points that jump out. That first call to Dora, going from laughing, lighthearted prank calls to abject sadness in a matter of seconds, was like a slap in the face. Talking about face slapping, Ruby killed herself right in front of us, and it rocked me. You can hear it, easily. And that dream sequence with Dora, where Harry's longing and broken heart jumps off the page, so to speak? That is some amazing writing. And spin-kicking Measurehead was like delivering a well-deserved comeuppance to every racist, sexist, homophobic asshole I've ever met. Then, last episode, when the Phasmid appeared, I was honestly overcome with excitement I didn't even know I was sitting on. Thank you for allowing me to share all of that with you. I'm not gonna lie. I was disappointed that the murderer was Mr. Dross, instead of a character we had been dancing with throughout the playthrough. I can, however, forgive that one shortfall amongst an otherwise masterpiece of writing and game design. I don't know when, but I will definitely play through Disco Elysium again. I hope you will join me when I do. In the meantime, be kind to yourself and all the people in your life, and of course, be sure to spay or neuter your pets.
Are you still here? Do you find you're the last person in the movie theater watching the credits? Do you realize on your way out that the cleaning staff has been waiting for you to get out? Yeah, me too. You're awesome. 